Folks, Vice President Kamala Harris uh, spoke today uh, in Houston, where she addressed the American Federation of Teachers uh, during her 19-minute speech. She aggressively went after Donald Trump, Project 2025, and other critical issues. Here's some of what she had to say. We are clear-eyed as we work to build a brighter future and to move our nation forward. There are those who are really trying to take us backward. And you, I'm sure, have seen their agenda. Project 2025. Randy, can you believe they put that thing in writing? <laughs> 900 pages in writing. So Project 2025 is a plan to return America to a dark past. Donald Trump and his extreme allies want to take our nation back to failed trickle-down economic policies, back to union busting, back to tax breaks for billionaires. Donald Trump and his allies want to cut Medicare and Social Security to stop student loan forgiveness for teachers and other public servants. And I say to AFT, they even want to eliminate the Department of Education and end Head Start, which of course would take away preschool from hundreds of thousands of our children. He intends to give tax breaks to billionaires and big corporations and make working families foot the bill. And he intends to end the Affordable Care Act. Now think about that, to take us back to a time when insurance companies had the power to deny people with pre-existing conditions. Remember what that was like? Children with asthma, women who survived breast cancer, grandparents with diabetes. You know, America has tried these failed economic policies before, but we are not going back. We are not going back. No, we will move forward. And one of the best ways to keep our nation moving forward is to give workers a voice to protect the freedom to organize, to defend the freedom to collectively bargain, to end union busting. As head of the White House Labor Task Force, I have led our work to eliminate barriers to organizing in both public and private sectors, including for teachers, but there is more that we must do. President Joe Biden and I promise to sign the PRO Act into law, and I promise you I will keep that promise. Because when workers join together and demand what is fair, everyone is better off. Understand, and I, I say this everywhere I go, understand, you may not be a a union member, but you should thank unions, and I'm looking to the cameras in the back of the room, <laughs> not them, but the people who might be watching. Um, you may not be a union member, but thank unions for the five-day work week. <laughs> for the eight-hour work day. Thank unions for sick leave and paid family leave and vacation time. Because the fact is, unions helped build America's middle class. And when unions are strong, America is strong. So AFT, ours is a fight for the future. And ours is a fight for freedom. In this moment across our nation, we witness a full-on attack on hard-won, hard-fought freedoms. 
while you teach students about democracy and representative government, extremists attack the sacred freedom to vote. While you try to create safe and welcoming places where our children can learn, extremists attack our freedom to live safe from gun violence. They have the nerve to tell teachers to strap on a gun in the classroom. While they refuse to pass common sense gun safety laws. And while you teach students about our nation's past, these extremists attack the freedom to learn and acknowledge our nation's true and full history, including book bans. Book bans in this year of our Lord 2024. And on these last two issues, on these last two issues, just think about it. So we want to ban assault weapons and they want to ban books. Can you imagine? All the while, these extremists also attack the freedom to love who you love openly and with pride. They pass so-called don't say gay laws. Now I have to tell you, so many of you may know, in 2004, on Valentine's Day weekend, I was one of the first elected officials in the country to perform same-sex marriages. So here's the thing. It pains me so to think 20 years later that there are some young teachers in their 20s who are afraid to put up a photograph of themselves and their partner for fear they could lose their job. And what is their job? The most noble of work, teaching other people's children. And God knows we don't pay you enough as it is. In this moment, we are in a fight for our most fundamental freedoms. And to this room of leaders, I say, bring it on. All right, folks, joining me right now, our panel, Reese Colbert, host of the Reese Colbert Show, a serious XM radio, joining us out of D.C. Dr. Greg Carr, Department of Afro-American Studies at Howard University, also out of D.C. Long Victoria Burke, Black Press USA, joining us from Arlington. Greg, you're the educator on the panel. I'll start with you. Um, listen, when we talk about AFT, NEA, not only we're we talking about public education, we also talk about two of the biggest uh, funders of the Democratic Party. Not only do they supply money, they supply boots on the ground. And when you have Republicans who are directly attacking public education, when you look at the voucher scam they're trying to do in Texas and Tennessee and other states, uh, the, the, re the reaction that she got from the teachers in Houston obviously was a huge reaction. We're talking about a group that she is going to need to drive mobilization on the ground. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, she's not an unknown quantity to the AFT. Uh, when she was in the Senate in 2019, uh, she supported a teacher strike in L.A., which stood in opposition, actually, to uh, fellow Democrats who were trying to expand charter school options in the city. Um, she, When she ran for president in 2020, she unrolled a plan to raise teacher pay, which, uh, of course, was made the unions and the teachers very happy. And, you know, this is this is a huge uh, a fight. Uh, shout out, by the way, to those in the state of Georgia who pushed back at that punk secretary of state. And now the advanced placement African-American studies course will be offered. <laughs> and it's, uh, this is very important. Um, and as you say, the AFT is the largest union in the AFL-CIO affiliation. This is boots on the ground. And. I think as you were talking yesterday uh, with the state uh, representative and leader of the state house in Philly, I mean, in Pennsylvania, it was the punch in the mouth 
on Sunday evening by the sisters, followed by Monday by the brothers that backed up all of the other noise around all of the other candidates and the AFT, certainly their wide ringing endorsement, but they jumped in and did that very quickly, the first big union to do so. It's just got this, this momentum is rolling. It's just really rolling. Uh, it is. And, and, what, and what you're seeing here, uh, Lauren, uh, you are seeing very aggressive posture being taken by this campaign. Uh, they're not trying to sit here uh, and play this thing nice with Republicans. Not. Uh, we see that in their messaging, uh, in their statements. Obviously, they have someone uh, who is young and uh, aggressive doing their statements because their statements have been quite something and, and quite a huge change from what we typically see from the Democratic Party. And I think this is why generational change often is very important. Uh, it is amazing. It is a night and day switch. It's a much more aggressive campaign. It's a much more updated campaign from the use of Beyonce to the statements that are coming out, the things that they're attacking, the speed is, is completely different. And of course, unions are, play a huge role in democratic campaigns. And uh, you know, you're gonna see SEIU out there knocking the doors and UAW. And of course, President Biden was the first to join a picket line, which was UAW. But uh, unions are huge. Uh, hopefully the Teamsters will wake up to that because the Teamsters president decided to make a speech at the Republican National Convention, which Matt, Matt, which actually made absolutely no sense whatsoever, uh, Sean O'Brien. But maybe he'll come around as well. But of course, all the major unions have uh, endorsed the Democrats, who of course spend so much of their time working on union issues, labor issues, minimum wage, et cetera, and so on, uh, and while the Republicans spend all their time fighting against all of that. You know, Reese, uh, to the point Lauren made there, I think that is a really important one uh, in terms of uh, how uh, they've taken a much more aggressive tone uh, towards um, uh, towards uh, Donald Trump and the Republicans. Uh, a press release went out today where they literally put in the headline, uh, 78 year old convicted felon. Uh, they're not trying to be nice about this here. And I think, listen, when you deal with a bully, you have to hit hit a bully. Uh, square in the eye. And you remember, and I, I've talked about it a lot, and Michelle Obama kept talking, you know, made a co famous comment, when they go low, we go high. Now, this, this uh, Biden, this, this Harris for president campaign, they like, you hit us low, we gonna hit you lower. Period. I mean, listen, at the, at the end of the day, what we're seeing now is the same thing that I've been talking about for years. I had to put that in there. In 2019, her whole campaign was really about prosecuting the case. People have looked at Vice President Kamala Harris through the lens of, of the primaries, which was a lot more difficult to break through when you are dealing with mostly ideologically aligned Democrats going up against uh, the former vice president of the United States versus what we're seeing with Donald Trump. She has always had her foot up Donald Trump's ass if anybody was paying attention. I mean, they played one of her 2019 campaign ads that referred to him as a sexual assaulter, as a criminal back then before there were any convictions on the table. And so what we're going to continue to see is that tough posture of prosecuting the case. Donald Trump himself gave them the best soundbite saying that they're gonna talk about how she's a prosecutor and I'm a felon. Uh, yeah, damn right we are. And this is going to be much more of a fight. The gloves are off. She is untethered. She is unchanged. She doesn't have to shrink back behind. No shade, I love Uncle Joe, but an 81-year-old uh, white man who, you know, was my friend this, my friend that, and who was, you know, a lot less scrappier than he had been in the past. Um, now she's running the show, and I love to see the difference in the energy and the difference in the messaging. You know, Greg, um, I was having a conversation earlier and uh, someone here at the Urban League Convention here in New Orleans and somebody was saying, man, she just, you know, it's just so much better than 2019. And I went, it's five years ago. I mean, I mean, the reality is when she ran 2019, first time running for national office, um, she doesn't even make the first primary. Um, Biden picks her as VP went through a tough couple of years, staff turnover, uh, backbiting from, from folks in the administration. And so anyone can tell this is a candidate 
who's got her footing. If you look at uh, different media outlets have done TikTok stories on how she mobilized folk in the 10 hours after President Biden made his announcement. I mean, her team is hitting on all cylinders. How they lined up the phone calls, how they were nailing folks. When you look at the fundraising, not only from small donors, from major donors, when you look at, again, the moves that they made, they have been nailing it every single day. This is a Harris for President team that totally understands you achieve maximum efficiency every single day because there is no day, no hour, no minute to waste. None, none, that's right. Just over a hundred days and counting, absolutely. And I heard you, uh, of course we all did in conversation the other night uh, with Scott Bolden where you made the very same point. She shouldn't be the same candidate as she was uh, four years ago or five years ago. It's very clear. It's very interesting, isn't it? I mean, that when we look at even and the comparisons are inevitable between between her candidacy and the Obama candidacy of 2008. What we see is that there is a similar excitement. There's an enthusiasm. There's a, a paradigm shifting kind of momentum. But there are also key distinctions. Uh, the vice president has learned. She's absolutely learned. Uh, she reached out to her pastor, Reverend Amos Brown, the legendary Amos Brown, of course, a uh, student of Martin Luther King and Benjamin Mays and so others, also incidentally in Alpha. Uh, I saw that same letter uh, rolling about don't wear your colors if you're going to make an endorsement. But uh, it just came out from the national office. But, you know, <laughs> it's not, you know, it's not a Jeremiah Wright moment, though. It's not Jeremiah Wright. You can't attack Amos Brown. And her tie to the black church is indelible and she maintains it. Um, you know, Will I Am took that speech from when you were covering in Iowa with everyone else as as uh, Barack Obama sh shocked the world with the yes, I, yes we can, and then Will I, Will I Am remixes it and gives Barack Obama his first campaign song. Well, I think the endorsement of Beyonce not only trumps that, it sets a new standard. <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and so when it comes down to her campaigning, the speech today she gave, you know, Randy Weingarten led in with the full guns blazing attack on uh, Donald Trump, but the speech she gave today hit the perfect sweet spot to deal with the educators and deal with organized labor. Now, her pick of a vice president, Ed Luce writing in the op-ed page of today's Financial uh, Times referred to J.D. Vance as the uh, new hillbilly in chief. Well, now she's got to pick a vice president and that might pose a little bit of a problem. Uh, the AFT doesn't particularly like Josh Shapiro, for example who has been a little bit too friendly around school vouchers for the taste of those unions. So now we're going to see as she steps into this role, her speaking as a potential executive in chief, not a second in line, not a person who now can uh, kind of have time to get up to speed. She's gonna have to be presidential now at the policy side. And I think she's proving over the uh, first few days of the campaign, she's more than up to that challenge. Um, <clears throat> Lauren, See, for me, this is what I like. This is uh, a graphic they put out uh, that uh, is clear. When we fight, we win. I believe, and, and, I, and I, I, agree to some, I agree with what, what Greg is talking about in terms of sort of the excitement that's similar to 2008. But that was about change and hope. That was aspirational. I believe what people are saying is they want this. They want a candidate that is ready to kick ass. And I think, again, this language is important. When we fight, we win. Yeah, and this is the era that we live in where fighting is, is extremely necessary when you're going up against fascism and you're going up against liars and you're going up against racists, which is what she's going up against. You're going up against misinformation and disinf disinformation, which we're sure to see before the end of this. Uh, we are in the Trump era. We're in the MAGA Trump era of the Republican Party. And this party has no, this iteration of the Republican Party would appear to have no policy interest other than to control people's lives and set back the clock. I mean, it's a very strange situation. Uh, they're not talking about tax policy or less government in your life. Uh, the Dobbs decision is going to figure huge in uh, the race that we're about to see. 
uh, and young voters are going to be huge here. And you can see an uptick in interest when it comes to young voters. Uh, and it seems like Vice President Harris has excited that sector, which uh, President Biden was unable to excite. So it'll be interesting to see where the polls stand in two weeks. But, uh, you know, the, this type of messaging that we're seeing so far is fitting perfectly with the era that we live in. And I suspect she has some younger folks in there uh, who are very energetic. And, and God bless that. Curl Prep Natural Hair Solutions at CurlPrep.com. I'm in shock. For curls, locks, braids, twists, and even those wigs and extensions. Women, men, and children are loving this line. Look at this video and you be the judge. People line up to see this product in action at hair shows, and when they take a seat and try it, they don't believe it's their hair. Buy the products at curlprep.com. It works on all hair types. Use code ROLAND, that's R-O-L-A-N-D, lowercase letters, to get a 15% discount. Parents, remove the ouch. You will love this system because you can comb the product through your child's hair with your fingers. It's all at curlprep.com. Use code ROLAND, lowercase letters, to get a 15% discount.